That was absolutely fantastic to watch back actually, that's obviously my score there, Matthew Moss in Rochdale. I'm the curriculum lead there and I've been there now for six years and when I started at the school science results were particularly a problem and low and over the course of the five years that I was running the department we tried lots of different things and lots of different strategies to raise attainment. Um, we are only um, an LA controlled school, um, we're in Greater Manchester, we but we service an area of fairly high deprivation really, um, so we face a lot of significant challenges. Um, we have around, at the moment, 900 learners on roll, um, and we teach a three-year Key Stage 4. The department's made up of six full-time members of staff and three part-time members of staff, and at Key Stage 4, we have six 50-minute lessons. So it's fairly standard in terms of what many schools around the country are offering in terms of their curriculum offer. We use the Edexcel examination board, um, and obviously last year's big challenge was preparing learners for the new GCSE curriculum, because there were a lot of unknowns there. Um, Tassamai came to our attention as a result of a pixel breakout, um, and a colleague of mine, one of our deputy heads, asked whether I'd heard of Tassamai, which I had, um, and at that point I think I got in touch with Murray and we had um, a conversation over the phone about what Tassamai could offer, and it sounded, on the face of it, like something that would work, that the way that Tassamai was, was explained to us was this idea that there was an algorithm behind the system where the engagement with the questions from the learners enabled the algorithm to work out what they did and they didn't know and the questions were aimed to unpick the knowledge that maybe they were less secure in and therefore over a period of time continuous low stakes repetitive questioning would mean that they would gain some basal knowledge and that that's pretty much what we found what we found out the big one was how do you implement something like that at christmas we had a conversation in october Schools are, are slow burners, everything happens um, at, a, at, a, at a fairly low rate of speed. Um, it was the 17th of December, we were breaking up for Christmas last year and I had to get this out there because I had two weeks of learners being off on holiday where I needed them to be able to engage with this platform. Um, so we called a, a, a Key Stage 4 assembly and I did it with each of the year groups 9, 10 and 11. Um, and in the assembly, it was made really, really clear that this was a platform that they were going to be expected to engage with and I would be on it. Um, I think there is an element of you have really got to sell this to your students as something you firmly believe in. There are so many initiatives that come into school and particularly as the year 11 year progresses, so many new strategies that we try out with students. They know when or when you are telling the truth if you really believe this. Um, they tend to sniff it when you're just saying go away and do something. So it really is about your force of your personality and my students particularly really do know that I am, if nothing, persistent. Um, and therefore it was made very clear this was an expectation and they were going to do it. They got an email on Christmas morning which said, I have noticed you have not been on Tassamai today. Make sure you log on and get your questions done. Your goal is, your wheel is red, this is not going to continue. Um, we had a great opportunity on snow day. At 6am I got a phone call from the boss which said we're not in today. I went, fantastic, I'll send an email to the year 11s. We're not in school today kids, get on Tasmai. Um, I'm well known for driving home through the streets of Rochdale and spotting my year 11s on the road and I wind the window down and I will shout, Pass my. I will walk around school and make the sign with my hands and they go, yes, miss, miss, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm doing it now. Um, it really is about persistent, consistent, insistent and persistent. That's the only way that they begin to realise that actually you really do mean it. You're going to chase this, that you're going to chase this up. So they get a weekly email um, from me every day, well every week, every Sunday evening I sit down and I, I, I analyse who's been on and who's not been on and then I send out um, an email. Two emails generally um, over the course of the week. One email is very much a um, nudge theory email, positively phrased, well done to those of you who are really committed and you're on it. Maybe more of a 
personalized email to members of my own group maybe who aren't necessarily on it reminding them that if they're not by Monday's lesson then they're going to be in task my catch-up club which we have every lunchtime in our department so they'll get their weekly email and one of the things that we did was we insisted that one of their weekly homeworks was to ensure that they were on top of their task my wheel so this year it's very much you've got to make your daily goal by making it an expectation there's no negotiation they have got to engage with this and they've got to engage with it um, quite consistently because that's where the benefit comes from not from doing everything the night before and I think that's one of the nice things that TASMA enabled us to do which was to spread this intervention and revision out over the course of the year so I communicated with parents very quickly and early on and on the back of the letter they were given some really clear deadlines um, about what they needed to do and by when so we looked at when the exams were which the, the platform actually does for them and calculates back when we expected them to have met certain percentages in terms of their attainment um, and we made it very clear that it was mandatory and we have a period seven which is um, in addition to our school day with our year 11s on a Monday it was last year where we would sit and we would use TASMI and we would check it and at that point then people would find out whether or not they were in my good books or my bad books and the expectation was that they did complete 100% of that course by the exam um, Again, it was all about communication and it was about making sure that at regular intervals they knew where they needed to be and that we were holding them to account if they weren't. Um, so it was made really clear in line with when the exams were, what they needed to do and how, how much they needed to have achieved. D6 was one of the things which really helped us to, I think, reap the benefits of, of TASMI. As it said on the film there, D6 was an initiative that the head came up with a few years ago. Um, because we are in an area of deprivation, um, we have a significant number of learners who struggle to really engage with their studies off-site. They were only doing what they needed to do because they were in school. Um, part of that was because they didn't have the access to a, a maybe a nice quiet environment or maybe internet access because that is an issue particularly from, for some families who struggle. D6 is a Saturday school which we run from 9 to 1 o'clock every Saturday and it's open to any learner across the school but really there is a bit of an expectation that year 11 use that. We have a local sixth form college, we don't have a sixth form um, ourselves, we have a local sixth form college where we tout for the best sixth formers every September and we pay them to come in and be peer mentors and peer coaches with our year 11s. What TASMA enabled us as staff to do was to identify the areas of knowledge that maybe a learner was struggling with because if you're using the program you'll know you get we call them the blobs of knowledge where when they engage with the platform you are able to ascertain if they have done many questions in a certain area and colour coded rag rated whether or not they are particularly adept at that or not and it enabled us to send learners into D6 with a really really precise idea about what they did or they did not know because again when you are trying to get learners to make impact in terms of their interventions and revision they need to be working on the things that they need to work on not the things that they need or they like so they always know the first page of the revision guide really well because that's where they start and they've always got really nice colorful notes about the nice bits of biology that they really like but they don't touch the physics equations or they don't touch the chemistry calculations because they don't like them tassama is really good at making them do the stuff that they don't like um, and consequently d6 was a really good tool for this we could ascertain in our lessons what you don't know take that information to the coaches go and grab a chemistry coach go and grab a physics coach sit down and get a bespoke tutorial on that aspect of the curriculum and make sure you put that wheel right i if your wheel is red this week i want to see amber minimum by next week if your wheel is amber it's got to be green your wheel is small go and do some more questions you're evidently avoiding that so um Tassimai enabled us really to um, Embrace with D6 um, a really bespoke intervention program for them. Um, we regularly get 
quite a number of learners actually in terms of um, who turns out on a Saturday. I mean, you wouldn't think it, kids willingly turning out on a Saturday morning to do extra school, but it really does have an impact for them and therefore they feel the benefit quite quickly. Um, in the study groups work, and it becomes really self-perpetuating when you're on them and you're nagging them and they know there's no opt-out and then the element of competition comes in because as teachers we like to be fellow teachers and therefore in my department at least it's very much who's got the highest engagement in their class. So I'll regularly work out which classes are doing the most. Um, it's a nice way to make sure that people are working through religiously what they need to do because again it's about keeping on top of this revision and this intervention etc um, the competition element is quite interesting because you can you can really go far with that when you embed the, when you when you introduce something you've got to make sure that it's embedded um, the questions that they engage with and the instant gratification that they get from that really hooks them in. I think um, Jenna, one of my colleagues on the video, spoke about in the days of instant gratification, instant likes. That's where we're at. And TASMI enables learners to get a sense of instant gratification and via a platform, an interface that they'll regularly engage with. They're constantly on their phones now anyway. Five minutes less on Facebook, two less selfies a day and get yourself on TASMI. Come on, crack on kids. Um, we, we didn't realise actually, and I didn't actually realise until this morning, um, just how many questions in comparison to other schools that we did. There was 1.6 million questions correctly last year that our school answered. Now we're not a very big school, we're smaller than average, and last year's outgoing year 11s, I think there was 165 of them. Um, at last count, one of my year 9s who um, likes to be at the top of the TASMI leaderboard every week. He had done 2,400 questions last week um, because he does not want anybody else to beat him, um, which is great because carry on, crack on, yeah, you go on for it. Um, we use our Twitter feed to ensure that we are constantly, again, reminding learners and parents that this is a programme that we value and we engage with. We have in-school signage on the screens where, again, the leaderboard goes up. Um, we have a reward system. Um, it's great if learners are intrinsically in motivated to revise, but let's be honest, most of them aren't. So we reward them. We reward them with our achievement points. Um, and we reward them with the most sought after prize you can give any learner, front of dinner queue pass. If you are the top achieving or top answerer of the week, you get a front of cube, you can push in front of the year 11s, even if you're only a year nine. They go mad for this. It's free. We don't have a lot of money to throw at learners in terms of what we can reward them with. And, a, and a, you can get to the front of any cube pass, seems to do the trick, um, which is great because like I say, it's free. The learner that Jenna mentioned on the video before, he was a typical Matthew Moss learner. He was great. Relationships between him and staff were fantastic. We place an awful lot on relationships. Learning is relational. It's all about whether they connect with others people as us as people. You buy a person, not a product. It's the same with education. You buy your teacher, not what they're selling you. Taiwo, he was difficult to engage, he really was. He was nice, he was polite, he said what he needed to say, but he did very little. And consequently, when we launched Tasmai, he was around a grade four, three, four. We really pushed it. And particularly with the boys, um, it, they were harder to engage generally at first. The girls, the girls would do what, they, what you told them to do. The boys took a little bit longer, really, to get going, but eventually when they did get going and they, got, they were hammering it, Taiwo really seemed to feel the benefit. Um, and by the end of the year, and realistically, it was one of the, one of the few things that we changed. Taiwo was achieving, well, he did achieve, he achieved a grade eight and a grade seven. Now, what we found with what we were doing last year was that by the time we got to the mock exams in February, traditionally, we're still at that point going, oh my God, you're not revising. I'm marking these exam papers and you're still not doing what you need to do in terms of going home, doing the revision, what's the point? 90 exam papers here to mark and they're all gonna be really, really poor because you're not revising yet. Tassamai, because it was giving them that 
repetitive questioning meant that by the time we got to the February mock exams, we noticed something. They knew stuff. All right, they weren't applying it particularly well yet, but they knew stuff because they were bringing science capital to the table. They were bringing a knowledge of what that word might mean. Therefore, they were, they were even reflecting when they came out of the exam. Oh my God, I, I, I've seen that on Tassimimus. So what we were able to do then at that point was realise that these learners were actually beginning to pick up the basal knowledge that we needed. And as staff, as practitioners, the important thing for us really at that point is making sure that we can enable them to apply that because it's all about application now it's all the AO2 and the AO3 if AO1 is taken care of because they're beginning to see this knowledge and re <laughs> repetitively then AO2 and AO3 is where we can direct our efforts and that's what that was what really had the, the major impact for us last year so it is about being very consistent insistent and persistent and believing in it um, the results over the few years that I was running the department were improving very steadily um, but last year there was a huge shift a seismic shift between 47 and 62 now the last year was the, the start of the new 9 to 1 exams we hadn't changed massively anything other than our approach to revision and our approach to making sure that we were really pushing TASMI something that we expected learners to do um, and as a result, I can't stress enough, TASMI had impact across the scale. So it's not just about ensuring that learners who may be at the mid-range, grade four, grade five, are doing this. We managed to ensure that those learners who were really achieving top grade, when we did the case studies against what they had done in terms of their TASMI usage, these were the learners that were doing in excess of 80% of the questions. So. It, wasn't, it doesn't just fit one box. TASMI was, was supporting learners across the spectrum. It's really important you think about how you're going to implement this and make sure, like everything else, that you keep checking back on is your implementation actually taking root. Um, it's all about the team. If your staff aren't with you, if they're not competitive with you, then you can't do it on your own. You have got to make TASMI the word that everybody is using. You've got to make it an expectation across the department. And learners do feel very much a sense of belonging within their group when their teacher is having inter-faculty competition. So particularly for myself and Miss King, our kids do not want to be the group that haven't made TASMI this week because we name and shame them, we celebrate them, we make a big thing out of it. Um, so the, the more the learner engages with TASMI, the better the outcomes. And I think the big take home message from me today, because it is, it's Christmas again, it's not too late to start. It was the 17th of December last year when we launched this. They went home that afternoon <laughs> And I didn't know how many of them were going to take up the baton over the fortnight of the Christmas holidays. So I just made sure I was emailing them every day, pretty much. Um, and they got the message and they got it pretty quickly. The main thing, you keep on top of it, your staff keep on top of it, you embed that friendly competition. And then as soon as they begin to feel the benefits, as soon as they begin to realise that they, the impact of this platform is actually, I, I, I know some stuff. It is self-perpetuating at that point because learning is incremental. You need to know stuff before you can learn more. Learning is sticky. Knowing stuff is sticky. The stickier you are, the more stuff you can stick stuff to. And so it is about these learners making sure that through the engagement with TASMI, they were beginning to build that, that knowledge bank. Um, and I look forward to this year making sure that we again are pushing to ensure that our learners are, are, are up there across nationally where other schools are. It's a great sense of achievement from a little high school in Rochdale, which really doesn't get the best of press. Our learners were the top TASMI performers in the country. Goodness me, they didn't a half um, feel appreciative of the fact that their efforts were being rewarded. So I say go for it.